sun still shines. The moon still shines. We're the Saturday Early Show, coming to you from Fifth Avenue in New York City. There is a famous poem by Percy Bysshe Shelley about a statue of a great man, a king, that in time became a colossal wreck. That easily could have been the fate of another statue, one that depicts an ordinary man. But this sculpture by J. Stewart Johnson survived a colossal disaster, the World Trade Center attacks. If the most poignant stories of September 11th are those of ordinary Americans who rise amidst extraordinary tragedy, then the odyssey of one ordinary sculpture, a bronze businessman you might have overlooked a hundred times, is a compelling example of art imitating life. Double Check is a piece I did back in the early 80s, and I made an arrangement with uh, Merrill Lynch to have it um, put in Liberty Park. It's right at the foot of the North Tower. Uh, he's called Double Check because he's double checking his work to go to the next appointment. His name is also a double entendre for the double take you do before you realize he's not human. But Double Check isn't every man frozen in time. Today, the time in his bronze watch is turned back to recall the minute the first airplane struck the North Tower on September 11, 2001. And so I thought I would had kissed Double Check goodbye. But in an eerie twist of fate, Seward Johnson's piece was one of the few artworks in the World Trade Center vicinity to survive. The 20 benches in the park, steel benches were twisted and not his. He and his steel bench remained there, covered with dust, uh, this gray dust and this uh, papers and debris and everything that floated down around him. And um, I was told that rescue workers thought it was someone in shock and went up to help him and then had one of their few laughs of the day when they found out that they were helping a piece of bronze. Five weeks later, the artist visited Ground Zero. I want to save all of this feeling. It was very, extremely moving. I mean, it was heartbreaking to see all these dead flowers completely smothered in them and all of these other artifacts that were around him. Uh, he had an FBI hat on him. He had uh, all these patches from different rescue squads attached to him, and there were crosses put on him. There were teddy bears. There were candles. It was like his being there was like a representation of the beings that would never be there. The irony that this one statue would rise in stature was not lost on Double Check's critics. The man who was in charge of all the art down at the World Trade Center, naturally he was very uh, remorseful about all of this incredible art that was lost. He sort of said, isn't it strange that such a forgettable work as Double Check uh, could end up being so poignant? Even Double Check's own creator admits that it's the last work he ever dreamed he'd be remembered by. I don't know, I'm humbled by it, is what I've got to say, especially because he was not the pick of the litter, <laughs> as he would. <laughs> In fact, J. Stewart Johnson's most celebrated works are called Solid Impressions, sculptures that pay clever homage to famous Impressionist paintings. In other words, art that imitates art. But it is Johnson's unremarkable double check that has become an icon of survival. One month after the attacks, a different copy of Double Check, by then an international bronze star, was exhibited in Rome. People left about 700 messages on the piece, and they were all collected, and they were put in a book and sent to the American Embassy. They might have all said, what a lousy sculpture. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, because they're in so many different languages. There are seven copies of Double Check around the world, but the artist is afraid to remove his original from Ground Zero. I'm leaving Double Check with his bronze foot in the door. He's still in Ground Zero. I, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't dare take him out of there because he still belongs to me. 
and, uh, I, I, and there's nothing that says I can put it back. So Mr. Johnson and his team made another bronze cast, or double of double check, in his New Jersey atelier, along with many of the mementos New Yorkers left on the one at Ground Zero. He, he, they will end up right where they were on him. The teddy bear was sitting by this leg right there, and the cross was sitting on that side. The Manhattan businessman is being transformed into a permanent shrine. These are canisters. A shrine Johnson hopes will replace the makeshift memorial at Ground Zero. So here are the patches. I will paint everything. It will look just like it did with this dusty look. I might even put some trash around his feet. And I'm glad that he is just who he was. I'm glad that he was a nobody. And, and, and that's the guy who, who this has happened to. That's, that's American. <laughs> well, Jay Seward Johnson is anything but a nobody. He's an heir to the Johnson Johnson family fortune. His artwork has been exhibited around the world. His sculptures are owned by the Sculpture Foundation and can be seen at Grounds for Sculpture. That's in Hamilton, New Jersey.